Hello and welcome to today's lesson. We're going to be looking at topics under the standard 2.6 A and D in Algebra 2 and also looking at questions under the study island lesson and polynomial solutions. And so what I've done is I've pulled questions or example questions out of this polynomial solutions lesson that can be done solely on the graphing calculator or with very, very minimal paper and pencil work in the graphing calculator. And so the one that I'm using is the TI-84+. And so this is a great way to check yourself, develop a different understanding on what this problem is asking you to use. And also, if you just get stuck, it's a great fallback on in order to be able to answer these questions on your EOI. And this is the calculator that you get on the screen on the EOI. So as I'm going through these questions today, take notes, write down the steps of the buttons that I press so that you can have those to refer back to. And if you forget one little step, you can you know, reference those without having to watch the whole video. And if I ever go too fast, just pause and rewind and you can get caught back up that way. So I'm so glad that you're joining us today. And let's go ahead and look at some questions. Just a little bit of notes real quick before we start doing these questions. In order to solve an equation graphically, you're going to have to set the equation equal to zero first if that's not already done. And then you're going to graph it and we're going to do that on the calculator. And then we're going to find the x-intercept, which we're also going to do in the calculator. And then just as a reminder, the x-intercept is always the coordinate that's in the form of a number comma zero. The number of the x-coordinate is your x-intercept. And then we can also use the word zero or root to interchangeably with x-intercept. So x-intercept, zero, and root all mean the same thing. So this equation here is already solved and they've already graphed it for us. So we just have to find the x-intercepts. And so it, the, the graph is crossing the x-axis at negative five, negative four, and zero. So those are going to be our answers is B, negative five, negative four, and zero. And so this question here is as simple as it gets. Um, but I'll be, we'll be going over how to do the graphing part and the x-intercept part on the graphing calculator so it doesn't get too bad. This question says realtors earn commission on the number of houses H they sell over the course of a year. The commission they earn is based on the following formula. So commission per hours is equal to hours times the quantity hours plus 90 times the quantity hours minus 40. If a realtor wants to earn 180000 in commission in one year, how many houses must they sell? So here they're giving us the commission. So that's what we're going to fill in for C of H. And so I'm just going to go ahead and do that so I can look at my equation. So I'm going to have 180,000 equal to H times H plus 90 times H minus 40. And that's what that looks like. So if I want to use the graphing calculator to solve this, I'm going to have to put this in solve it for zero. So to do that, the side here that has the smallest amount on it is the left side. So I'm going to subtract everything on the left side from both sides. And so here, these are going to cancel out and you're going to be left with zero. And then I can't combine any of this, so I'm just going to copy the rest of it down. And so this is going to be the equation that I put into my graphing calculator. It's solved for zero. All right, so when I go in my graphing calculator, I'm going to press on. And then I'm going to clear out everything I have. And then I'm going to press Y equals and clear out anything that might be remaining there from old problems. And in this Y1, I'm going to type this equation here that I'm given. Only it's confusing to the calculator to use H's, so I'm just going to change the H's to X. And so I'm going to have an X in parentheses, which I get right here beside the alpha. 
and then an x plus 90 in parentheses, and then parentheses x minus 40 in parentheses, and then minus 180,000. And so now I'm going to go ahead and press graph. And chances are, since these numbers here are so big, I'm not going to see any graph, and I don't. So that means I'm just going to have to zoom out. And because these numbers are all under 100, I'm going to tell my window to go from negative 100 to positive 100. And I'm going to tell the scale, which means how often I see a tick mark, to be 10. And I'm going to do that for the y-axis also. And now I'm going to press graph again, and hopefully I see a graph this time, and I do. And so here I see the graph is crossing the x-axis one, two, three times, which isn't a surprise because I have three variables in my equation. And typically when you have three variables in an equation, you have three answers, three x's in an equation. So however, I'm looking here, these are two negative answers and this is a positive answer. A realtor is going to want to make the positive money. They're not going to want to be in the hole. So this is the answer that I care about. So to have the calculator calculate that x-intercept, I'm going to use this calc function here. And if you notice, it's blue on top of the button, so I'm going to have to use the second button. So second calc, and then I'm going to choose 0, because remember 0 is the same as the x-intercept. So you can scroll down and highlight 2 and press Enter, or you can just press 2. And the first question it asks is, what's the left bound? Now this problem it might be a little bit more difficult for me to move and see my spider because the line is so straight up and down. And so I'm going to have to kind of, you know, maybe take a guess on where this x-intercept is so I can find a good left bound. And so I told the calculator to put a tick mark at every 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. It looks like it's going to be about 60 is my x-intercept. And so for the left bound, I'm going to want a number that's smaller than 60. And so I use my right and left arrows. And 46 is a good number, so I press Enter. And then for my right bound, I'm going to want a number bigger than 60. And so 72 works. And I know that I did that right because the arrows are pointing in at each other. And then for guess, I'm just going to try to get it as close to 60 as I can and press Enter. And there, there is the spider. It shows up. It was actually 60. So my <clears throat> x-intercept here is 60 which is going to make my final answer C. And you can use the table feature to check it out also. So second table, there's 60 is across from a Y coordinate of zero. So that is another way for me to see that 60 is an X intercept and my final answer of C. Now this question here is I'm solving for X again. It's just without the word problem. And so it's already been solved for zero. So that means I can go into Y equals and clear out my old equation and type in this new equation. So I'm going to type in 5X. And to get cubed, you can either go into the math menu or use the caret button right here. And that'll create an exponent. And I type in a 3. And once I'm done typing in the exponent, I type the right arrow. And then minus 40. And so I want to go back to that standard window, negative 10 to 10 on both the x and y axis. So I'm going to press zoom and choose 6 for zoom standard. And now I'm not looking at that huge screen anymore. And so here I see one of the x-intercepts is 2. However, there can always be more than one, but since I am looking at my answers here and it's multiple choice and I see they only list one for all solutions for each answer choice I don't have to zoom out to see if there's going to be more and so it looks like like I said it looks like it's going to be one two but to confirm that on the calculator I'm going to use the calc feature or the table feature and so to use the calc feature I press second calc and I'm going to do choice two for zero which means x-intercept and I'm going to move using the right and left arrow until I see the spider on the left because it asks for the left bound. And so once it's blinking to the left, I press enter. And then I move it to the right and I press enter. 
and then I press I try to get it as close as I can which that's as close as I can get it and so I press enter and there it is two and so there that confirms that my answer is going to be choice C and you can also use the table to do that so if you go to second table set you can tell the table to start at two and then you go to second table and there across from the two is a y coordinate of zero which is the format you need for the x-intercept so two is also the answer if you go the table route and if you wanted to you could check each of these by just going table set if you wanted to do the one half you'd have to change the table to 0.5 here and then you could do 12.5 and go to second table and it automatically takes you there and there's not a zero so you can see that's a wrong answer so that's another way you can do these problems in our next question we have to find all the solutions and I see that there can be anywhere from three to four x-intercepts this time to find so I'm gonna go ahead and type this into y equals so I'm gonna clear out my last problem and type 4x caret button 4 right arrow minus 4x caret button 3 right arrow minus 100x squared plus 100x and since it's already solved for 0 I could just type it straight in like that and so now I'm gonna do the zoom standard because that gets me from negative 10 to positive 10 on both the x and y axis and when I look at all my answers here, they are between negative 10 and 10, so I should be able to see all of them. So here it looks like the graph is W-shaped, and it crosses the x-axis one, two, three, four times. And so that narrows it down to A and D right away. So you can go ahead and use the calc feature or the table feature. Either one will get you the answer. So if you're going to use the calc feature, you're going to do second calc. And you're going to do the zero option, which is choice two. And you need to move the cursor to the left of the first x-intercept. And so I'm just moving it until it comes back up here using the left arrow. And let's see. And once again, because this line is so straight up and down, it, the cursor doesn't show up very well on this screen. Um, so this might be a problem where it's easier to use the table function, which I'll show you. But you can, you know that because this is the standard screen that these are each tick mark here represents one. So negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. So you know it's about negative five. So if it's on the left side of negative five, it's going to be smaller than negative five. So that would be negative 6, I could press enter. And the arrow shows up on the left side, so that's good. And then the right side, I want this number here to be bigger than negative 5, which that is, so I press enter. And then the guess, I want to get it as close to negative 5 as I can, and press enter. And there, it tells me that the 0 is negative 5. And you would have to repeat that for all four of these. And the way you can use the table feature is you can go into table set and press second set. And I'm going to change this here to a one because they are all whole numbers. And here I'm just going to tell it to start with zero. And then I press second table. And there it is straight at zero. There's a y coordinate of zero also. So that means that that is going to be an answer. And then I can see that 1 and 5 are also answers right away from this screen because they also have a y coordinate of 0. And then if I just go ahead and scroll up, negative 5 also has a y coordinate of 0. So that confirms that D is going to be my final answer because all four of these choices have a y coordinate of 0 and that means they are x-intercepts and answers to the equation. So thank you for joining us today and I hope you learned something new.